what are the different trajectories that intelligence, when acted upon this world, super intelligence, what are the different trajectories for this universe with such an intelligence in it? Do most of them not include humans? I mean, if you the vast majority of randomly specified utility functions do not have optima with humans in them, would be the like first thing I would point out. And then the next question is like, well, if you try to optimize something and you lose control of it, where in that space do you land? Because it's not random, but it also doesn't necessarily have room for humans in it. I suspect that the average member of the audience might have some questions about even whether that's the correct paradigm to think about it and would sort of want to back up a bit, possibly. Yeah, if we back up to something bigger than humans, if we look at Earth and life on Earth, and what is truly special about life on Earth, do you think it's possible that a lot, whatever that, that special thing is, let's explore what that special thing could be, whatever that special thing is, that thing appears often in the objective function. Why? I, I know what you hope, but you know, you can hope that a particular set of winning lottery numbers come up and it doesn't make the lottery balls come up that way. I know you want this to be true, but why would it be true? There's a line uh, from Grumpy Old Men where this guy says in a grocery store, he says, you can wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which one fills up first. This is a science problem. We are trying to predict what happens with AI systems that, yeah. you know, you try to optimize to imitate humans, and then you did some like RLHF to them. And of course you like lost, and, and you know, like, of course you didn't get like perfect alignment because that's not how, you know, that's not what happens when you hill climb towards a lo outer loss function, you don't get inner alignment on it. But yeah, so the, I think that there is, so if you don't mind my like taking some slight control of things and steering around to what I think is like a good place to start. I just failed to solve the control problem. I've lost control of this thing. Alignment, <laughs> alignment. I, <laughs> well, still well, aligned. Control, yeah. Okay, sure, yeah, you lost control. Um, <laughs> but we're lost, still aligned. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> anyway, sorry for the meta comment. Yeah, yeah losing control isn't as bad as you lose control to an aligned system. Yes, hopefully. exactly, exactly. You, you have no idea of the horrors I will shortly unleash on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, uh, sorry, sorry to distract you completely. What were we going to say in terms of taking control of the conversation? So... I think that there's like a Sila and Chabdris here, if I'm pronouncing those words remotely like correctly, because of course I only ever read them and not hear them spoken. Um, there's a, like for some people, like the word intelligence smartness is not a word of power to them. It means chess players who, it means like the, the college university professor, people who aren't very successful in life. It doesn't mean like, Charisma, to which my usual thing is like, charisma is not generated in the liver rather than the brain. Charisma is also a cognitive function. Um, so, if you if you like think that like smartness doesn't sound very threatening, then super intelligence is not going to sound very threatening either. It's going to sound like you just pull the off switch. Mm -hmm. Like it's you know like well it's super intelligent but it's stuck in a computer. We pull the off switch. Problem solved. And the other side of it is you have a lot of respect for the notion of intelligence. You're like, well, yeah, that's that's what humans have. That's the human superpower. And it sounds, you know, like it could be dangerous, but why would it be? Are we have have we as we have grown more intelligent also grown less kind? Chimpanzees are in fact like a bit less kind than humans and you know. Can, you could like argue that out, but often the sort of person who has a deep respect for intelligence is going to be like, well, yes, like you can't even have kindness unless you know what that is. And so they're like, why would it do something as stupid as making paper clips? Aren't you supposing something that's smart enough to be dangerous, but also stupid enough that it will just make paper clips and never question that? In some cases, people are like, well, even if you like misspecify the objective function, won't you realize that what you really wanted was X? Mm -hmm. Are you supposing something that is like smart enough to be dangerous, but stupid enough that it doesn't n understand what the humans really meant when they specified the objective function? So 
to you, our intuition about intelligence is limited. We should think about intelligence as a much bigger thing. Well, I'm saying that it's that- Than that, humanness. Well, what, what I'm saying is like, what you think about artificial intelligence um, depends on what you think about intelligence. So how do we think about intelligence correctly? Like what, you gave one thought experiment to think of, think of a thing that's much faster. So it just gets faster and faster and faster. I think the same and, stuff. And, and, and also, there's like is made of John von Neumann and has like, and there's lots of them. Or, or we think of some other. Because we understand person. that, yeah, we understand. Like John von Neumann is a historical case, so you can like look up what he did and imagine based on that. And we know, like, we people have like some intuition for like if you have more humans, they can solve tougher cognitive problems. Although, in fact, like in the game of Kasparov versus the world, which was like Gary Kasparov on one side. And an entire horde of internet people led by four chess grandmasters on the other side, Kasparov won. So, like all those people aggregated to be smarter. It was a it was a hard fought game. So, like all those people aggregated to be smarter than any individual one of them, but not they didn't aggregate so well that they could defeat Kasparov. But so, like humans aggregating don't actually get, in my opinion, very much smarter, especially compared to running them for longer. Like the the difference between capabilities now and a thousand years ago is a bigger gap than the gap in capabilities between ten people and one person. But like even so, pumping intuition for what it means to augment intelligence, John von Neumann, there's millions of him. He runs at a million times the speed, mm -hmm. and therefore can solve tougher problems, quite a lot tougher. It's very hard to have an intuition about what that looks like, especially like you said, you know, the intuition I kind of think about is uh, it maintains the humanness. I think I, I think it's hard uh, to separate my hope from my objective intuition about what super intelligent systems look like. If one studies evolutionary biology with a bit of math, and in particular, like books from when the field was just sort of like properly coalescing and knowing itself, like not the modern textbooks, which are just like memorize this legible math so you can do well on these tests, but like what people were writing as the basic paradigms of the field were being fought out. Yeah. In particular, like a, a, a nice book, if you've got the time to read it, is. Um, adaptation and natural selection, which is yeah. one of the founding books. You can find people being optimistic about what the utterly alien optimization process of natural selection will produce in the way of how it optimizes its objectives. You got people arguing that, like in the early days, biologists said, well, like organisms will restrain their own reproduction when resources are scarce so as not to overfeed the system. And this is not how natural selection works. It's about whose genes are relatively more prevalent to the next generation. And if you if like you restrain reproduction, those genes get less frequent in the next generation compared to your conspecifics. And Natural selection doesn't do that. In fact, predators overrun prey populations all the time and have crashes. That's just like a thing that happens. And many years later, uh, well, oh, 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 the people said like, well, but group selection, right? What about groups of organisms? And basically the math of group selection almost never works out in practice is the answer there. But also years later, somebody actually ran the experiment where they took populations of insects and selected the whole populations to have lower sizes. Like you just take pop one, pop two, pop three, pop four, look at which has the lowest total number of them in the next generation and select that one. What do you suppose happens when you select mm -hmm. populations of insects like that? Well, what happens is not that the individuals in the population evolve to restrain their breeding, but that they evolve to kill the offspring of other organisms, especially the girls. So people imagined this 
lovely, beautiful, harmonious output of natural selection, which is these, these populations restraining their own breeding so that groups of them would stay in harmony with the resources available. And mostly the math never works out for that. But if you actually apply the weird, strange conditions to get group selection that beats individual selection, what you get is female infanticide. Mm. Like, if you're like breeding on restrained populations. And so that's like the sort of, so this is not a smart optimization process. Natural selection is like so incredibly stupid and simple that we can actually quantify how stupid it is if you like read the textbooks with the math. Nonetheless, this is the sort of basic thing of, you look at this alien optimization process and there's the thing that you hope it will produce and you have to learn to clear that out of your mind and just think about the underlying dynamics and where it finds the maximum from its standpoint that it's looking for, rather than how it finds that thing that leapt into your mind as the beautiful aesthetic solution that you hope it finds. And this is something that was has been fought out historically as the field of, po of biology was coming to terms with <laughs> evolutionary biology. And uh, and you can like look at them fighting it out as they get to terms with this very alien inhuman po in inhuman optimization process. And indeed, something smarter than us would be also be much like smarter than natural selection. So it doesn't just like automatically carry over. But there's a there's a lesson there. There's a warning. For do you natural selection is a is a deeply suboptimal process that could be significantly improved on? It would be by an AGI system. Well, it's kind of stupid. It like has to like run hundreds of generations to notice that something is working. It doesn't be like, oh, well, I tried this in like one organism. I saw it worked. Now I'm going to like duplicate that feature onto everything immediately. It has to like run for hundreds of generations for a new mutation to rise to fixation. I wonder if there's a case to be made that natural selection, as inefficient as it looks, is actually. Uh is actually quite powerful like that that this is extremely robust it runs for a long time and eventually manages to optimize things it's weaker than gradient descent because gradient descent also uses information about the derivative <laughs> yeah evolution seems to be there's not really an objective function there's a there's inclusive genetic fitness is the implicit loss function of evolution it's which implicit. cannot change the loss function doesn't change, the environment changes, and therefore like what gets optimized for in the organism changes. It's like take like GPT-3. There's like, you can imagine like different versions of GPT-3 where they're all trying to predict the next word, but they're being run on different data sets of text. And that's like natural selection, always includes through genetic fitness, but like different environmental problems. It's it's uh it's difficult to think about. So if we're saying that natural selection is stupid, if we're saying that humans are stupid, it's hard. smarter than natural selection. Smarter, stupider than the upper bound. Do you think there's an upper bound? By the way, that's another I hopeful mean, place. I mean, if you you put enough matter energy compute into one place, it will collapse into a black hole. And there's only <laughs> so much computation no. <laughs> can do before you run out of negentropy and the universe dies. Um, so there's an upper bound, but it's very, very, very far up above here. Like a supernova is only finitely hot. It's not infinitely hot, but it's really, 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 really hot. <laughs> 